Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Travel. Uh, I've got two wonderful gents, gentlemen with me today from Munich uh, and from Berner and Becker. Uh, Pontus Berner and Lars Becker, gentlemen, thank Hello. you for joining us. It's great to have you on the show. Great yes. to be here. In yeah, fact, I think you. this might actually be the final episode for season three. All right. Cool. So An you honor. get that honor. Yeah. Ah. Fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Good, good ending before Christmas. Time. I think so too. I think so too. <laughs> Gents, as we always do, I'd like to dig into your backgrounds and start with, um, we'll get to how you started Burner and Becker and why, but I'd mm -hmm. like to understand a little bit more about your hospitality background, yeah. your revenue management background, mm -hmm. um, because obviously that's part of your evolution to where you are today. So perhaps let's start with you, Pontus. All right. So, um, well, I started uh, quite some years ago. My first hospitality um, experience was uh, serving in my uncle's restaurant when I was like 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, things happened uh, since then. I was working for Hilton um, after high school a year to basically make up my mind if the industry was something for me uh, in order to take my next step and start a hospitality uh, university in Switzerland, which I then did. So at the Hilton I did valet parking, night audit, yep. all this kind of classical stuff. Yep. And then I started uh, studying at the Glion uh, Institute of Higher Education in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. was there for three and a half years. Um, within that, there was an uh, internship uh, where I was in Marbella in 2007, and that's where I met this guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to know each other because we were at the same hotel, basically, the, uh, yeah, doing our first internship. It was the Marriott uh, Marbella Beach Resort. Okay. Doing kitchen and flipping burgers and doing accounting. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And yeah, and after that, graduating, I knew my, my, my track was finance and revenue management, and I knew I, that's where I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. But it was very difficult actually for a newly graduate to come into revenue management. So um, Lars then called me a couple of years later and said, hey, I got an opening in my team uh, at NH Hotels at the time in Frankfurt. So I moved to Frankfurt in uh, 2011, and since then been in the revenue management field. Okay, good. Working for some of the big chains and uh, yeah. yeah it's good. Very, very and are you originally, bo were you born in Germany or are you no, Swiss? No, I'm, I'm, sw I'm Swedish actually. Swedish? Yeah, okay. so I'm from Stockholm. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Oh, right, from Stockholm. Yeah, awesome. lived there until I graduated high school and had that first year of experience. So my first work is that was at the Hilton in Stockholm. All right. Um, yeah, but so I'm Swedish and yeah, now I've lived here for eight and a half years. In Germany, time flies. Yeah, you know? it does. <laughs> I've been here seven now. I know it does yeah. fly. Yeah, yeah. So where were you born actually? Australia, Australia. Sydney. Okay, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't lived there for almost fifteen years now. Okay, I've been out for a while. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. my father was Dutch, so okay. I'm half European. That's why I <laughs> kind of find it easy to be here. Yeah. 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 All right. And Lars, how about yourself? Yeah. Uh, I also a bit different history, but. Uh, Initially, I wanted to get into tourism and sort of more the tour operating field, and planning travels and, and things, and uh, and did a bit of a after school internship there for a tour operator, and then started studying tourism management in the UK. Um, but then throughout the studies, I sort of found out that hotels is actually what interests me more, more, and uh, yeah, I had my first uh, internship there where where I, where I met Pontus and Mabea, and then. Um, in my last year, um, I started working, or I had a summer internship uh, at the Marriott uh, um, EMEA head office mm -hmm. in, in London in, mm -hmm. in revenue management, and I had an amazing uh, mentor who I've always, every, every time I have interns, I, I always feel bad because I never can show them as much as uh, this who guy showed it? me. Who was it? Uh, Oliver Terry. Okay. Um, and. Um, I think he's still with the company, but uh, yeah, he just showed me a lot of things, and that really yeah. got me into it. And I yeah. knew I wanted to uh, to work in revenue management, and uh, um, yeah, and then basically my first job after university was in that field mm -hmm. um, of revenue management, and I've been in it ever ever since. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, and as Pontus mentioned, uh, um, yeah, at some point in time, I was uh, revenue managing some uh, Frankfurt hotels uh, with, for the uh, NH Hotel Group, and. And uh, I was looking for, uh, for support, and I never knew. I never thought he would come. Right. And uh, three months later, he was there. He was there. And uh, <laughs> so, what did you said that it was um, difficult for you to get into revenue management? Yeah. Why was that exactly? Could you explain? Yeah, I mean, very few companies offered opening positions for newly graduates, uh, okay. like within the chains and so on. I was going for the. 
what is it called? These um, the chain has usually big programs for. I can't remember the name of them now. Who's I think one of them something? calls them Voyager program yeah. or maybe sort of yeah post, the ladder program and all these things. things yeah. But nothing really involved. There was very few things that uh, was about revenue management right. and. Um, I uh, took a job at the uh, the courtyard by married opening in mm, Stockholm mm. Uh, just uh, after I graduated, um, and then but the first sort of chance I got to move into revenue management, mm. I took. The reason why I asked is because I saw just the other day actually Hilton had a advertisement. I think it was on LinkedIn for looking for um, graduates for revenue yeah. management um, yeah. programs for yeah. them to join essentially. Mm. Uh, you know, revenue management program for them to groom future revenue managers. There is more, obviously, now, I guess, yeah. but uh, it was 10 years ago. Um, right. So it was a bit different, maybe yeah. also then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was there was for sure not easy. And no. it's something that, uh, that I've heard from our colleagues, there was the same a little bit for them. Yeah. But yeah. You wanted to find that good good way, first step into a chain where you can where you can just be like a, a yeah. swamp and yeah. grasp yeah. all the knowledge that's yeah. there. And what was it about revenue management specifically that attracted you to, well, what was it that attracted you to revenue management, I should yeah. say? It's very competitive, I think. It's right. a bit like it's a bit like playing a game yeah. the whole time. Like uh, I don't know. For for once, it's it's very number focused, analysis focused, data focused. That that's something I personally like. Yeah. Um, and I and I I also worked a bit in accounting before, and I I, I think there you always just look at the past, and in revenue management you always look at the future and you try to optimize it and yeah. you try to yeah. to be better, and and I like that sort of challenge. Like still I. I always like pulling up the the SDR report uh, of the day before and just seeing if I've did if, if I've done better or that the team has done better than the competition yeah. or yeah. The last year. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a competitiveness to it. Yeah, competitiveness. Yeah. 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 Just that it's being. I think we're both in in a sense a number driven people, and yeah. for me it was just a perfect combination of being able to work with numbers. It has that finance element, but it also has the people element of, you know being this politician that you somehow need to be as a revenue manager mm. and that's an interesting manage, way of yeah. describing it. <laughs> it's, sort of, it's, like, it's like you're uh, we usually say a spider in the net and you yep. need to be able to deal with different stakeholders you know to convince the director of sales that we need to sort of kick out the biggest account or and why that's beneficial but so it has that people element and it yeah. has the numbers and the finance and yeah, so yeah. I think it's a what's a great combination. So, what what does it take for someone to to be a, an effective, good revenue manager today? What what are the skill sets required apart from obviously being good with numbers? Um, what else is required if someone's interested in in being a revenue manager? It's usually soft skills, actually. Yeah. Um, because I usually say. We could maybe rename the title of revenue manager nowadays to a commercial hotel director because right. it's really up on that level yes. where you where you take the strategical commercial decisions and for that you you need to be uh, good in people management, good in corporate politics, yeah, mm-hmm. um, and really be a good communicator and mm-hmm. you know convince people and that the strategy is the right one and yeah. so on. So a bit of a salesman as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so soft skills for sure is, is hugely important and right. maybe even more and more as data let's say takes over some of the pricing decisions and so on it's becoming more and more on that commercial uh, strategy part mm, of mm. the job uh, so interesting yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think strategical thinking commercial understanding problem solving yeah. sort of working yeah. under under pressure at times, but yeah, for sure, the number element uh, is, is still very important. Yeah, okay. But uh, yeah. but it's interesting what Pontus said. We actually just sent everyone of our team to like a two day uh, soft skill course, like how to communicate effectively with clients and all of that, because we just feel it's so important that yeah. we get actually yeah. our message across in the correct way. Totally. Um, yeah. and Basically, the, the same thing as uh, <coughs> the big consultancy companies do, Deloitte and PVC, this sort of client management, uh, communication training, stuff mm-hmm. like this. This mm-hmm. is something that 
uh, a hotel chain would never really send, I think, the revenue managers on such a training, but it's actually what they would need to have. Mm. And especially mm. for us now in this constellation we're working, it's super mm. important. Yeah, good. Um, so, yeah. Okay, good. So let's fast forward now a few years. You've gone through your, your early days in hotels and yeah. you've known each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what was the spark or the, the instigator behind beginning your own company and becoming business partners? and starting Werner and Becker. What was the spark? I think it was two things that sparked us in a way. One was that we've always had difficulties finding good revenue managers for our teams where we were working at uh, for, for hotel chains and first of all finding them but then retaining them and, and uh, we found it very yeah, very difficult to build up good, good people there. Um, and in our latest job before we started uh, Werner and Becker we had sort of the role to build up the revenue center um, for a bigger hotel chain in, in Frankfurt and centralize it. So we needed to hire a lot of people. And um, that was one thing where we thought, okay, it's simply difficult for hotels to get good revenue managers. Um, and uh, then we thought, okay, the second one is we are now working for a big chain and we can't find them. How is an independent hotel going to do it uh, with 100, 150 rooms uh, that might actually need a good revenue manager, but how are they going to find a good revenue manager? If we can't even find them for the chains and then we it really was built out of the idea that we really wanted to provide e excellent revenue management service to uh, independent hotels but also to to chains and etc but the main yeah. first focus was independent hotels in right. that sense. Yeah. All right. and the, the sort of the the numbers that added to it was we read all these reports about how much behind the independent hotel market is in ADR yeah. and obviously it's one thing is about brand awareness and all that part that they cannot affect, but a big part is also because they simply don't do professional revenue management. Mm -hmm. And with 90% uh, of the hotels in Germany, 70% of the rooms uh, back then, uh, being independent in, in, in Germany, um, they always said, hey, there's a lot to there's a lot to do here. We yeah. want to want to yeah. help these people basically yeah. Yeah. to yeah. be competitive. Right. Have you found that, especially with the independence of the long tail, that you've had to do uh, much convincing, much selling? Has it been an easy uh, entry point to those ho properties, or have you really needed to try to both. show them the value? Bo mm. Both, I think. Um, we were. We were, let's say, I think, had a, a fairly good timing uh, in that we entered. Um, a time where revenue management as such as a theory um, is not questioned anymore whether it's good or not mm. that, at least that's what we thought because you know this was only three and a half years ago mm. and I mean revenue management has been in the airline industry since the 80s so yeah. and I would say maybe in a proper way in the hotel industry since the beginning of the 2000s so um, but still for sure there are a lot of hotel years that also need convincing and uh, need also an understanding of what it is exactly that revenue management is and what they need. Um, but uh, so there's definitely both. Some are educated on it and understand, and but we also need to do some convincing. For okay. sure. So let's just say you you, you work you, hotels have decided to work with you. Yeah. What 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 have you noticed going in initially that perhaps is consistent across a range of properties from different yeah. areas? that oh, these guys all seem to be having the same problem. Are they, uh, is that something that's happening or is, it cons is there a consistent pattern? Mm. I mean, one thing that we found in the beginning was with the different PMS providers, because yeah. we, um, we usually, un unless the hotels use revenue management software or business intelligence software, um, then we pull our data from the PMS uh, systems. And um, obviously we, you have a whole range of different PMS systems to work with and uh, we we just took it for granted that every PMS system you should be able to pull a report segmented by day um, yeah basically by day and by segment where you could see yeah. room nights and room revenue which is sort of the basic basic things we need in order yeah. to really understand the business and do a good forecast yeah. and I think it took us <laughs> took us like six weeks to talk with our, our from our first client to talk with that PMS provider first and back for them to understand what we actually wanted. Wow. Uh, and it, in, in the end, it, there was such a report, but it's still, we still have some sort of potential clients that we don't work with because their PMS can't provide the data we need. Wow. Even though it's such like, that's, the, that's really the, such a simple basic thing. Yeah. Um, and some are super easy, yeah. some are cloud-based, you sort of go in, you pull your reports, it's easy, some are server-based, it's a 
it's also possible yeah. VPN, etc. But yeah. that's certainly one one point. Yeah, yeah, but data for sure, and I think as well, um, linking back to um, what I said before, um, but to convince clients of what they need, um, you know, one thing is sort of the basic data. But if you want to be a hotel and do real professional revenue management, like the chains, yeah? mm. so you know a chain have their office, they have their people sitting, and they have the IT uh, landscape for mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a mix of human and machine, and we provide as a company the the human element part of it, and also the tech part of it in the sense that we're neutral and can work with the different tech providers with the best solution for the specific client. Mm. But to convince the client that they also need the tech, because they usually think I, I need either or, or don't understand why they need both. So it's sort of a hurdle for us to say, hey, listen, you need us, but you also need a system on top. Then it becomes too much. It's, it's too big of a cost, they think, or it's difficult to convince the value. Right, even, and, even today with the solutions that are available, even just on a subscription monthly basis, they I still find say, the cost yeah, too much. I would say so, because they think that one eliminates the other. This, this concept of the human and machine together is still difficult to grasp, I would say. Many think that, okay, I go only with a tech solution or they go only with us. Right, that's uh, but interesting, but we also need systems, uh, a certain IT landscape to do a professional job. Yeah. We have sort of a minimum, which you said, you know, without this, this, and this, there is nothing to do, um, yeah. and, and that is that is fairly okay. Um, but this for sure has been, I would say, it belongs to the data and it belongs to the expectations of the client. But to come over that hurdle and explain why they need both. And right, so and on a, uh, just from a percentage perspective, what what percentage of of your customers would be in that? A bracket would fall into that bucket. Uh, uh, I would say fifty percent, if not even more. Wow! Yeah, absolutely. That's a lot, isn't it? And uh, it's something that we, as in that sense, we are also, uh, uh, how do you say, advocators for tech. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, always. Yeah. And, and uh, but it, it's, uh, it's it's challenging. Yeah, I'm sure. And then you have you know then you have maybe a. Um, a franchise uh, franchiser that has brands of different uh, in different brands, also different portfolios, and then they have different systems, and then you need to be able to consolidate that mm-hmm. data. So on, these are also hurdle points. And so, so obviously, then your uh, output, if you like, for the customer, if they don't have a revenue management solution in place, would not be as effective or as powerful if you like yeah. as it would be for one that does yeah. obviously and like, or, or I think not. we I think we just need to be careful what what we mean with revenue management technology I mean there's revenue management systems right sophisticated ones mm-hmm. that actually do a lot of calculation themselves and then there's also like smaller things like like for example like Pontus mentioned minimum requirement like we need a rate shopper we need some market share right? yep. data um, ideally we want to have some BI tool that that we can work with, that we can simply analyze data better. Um, so that's sort of the minimum or the the thing, and then you have the revenue management systems. And, mm-hmm. and I would say we can we can do probably eighty percent of of the results, mm-hmm. just us with like our tools and and, uh, and with the bare minimum. But then the last twenty yeah. percent, um, you sort of get out if you apply a smart system on top. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, that then is really forward looking and I mean, no matter how good a revenue manager is, you don't always look at 365 days, two times a day, to see what happened. And that's mm. basically what the system does for mm. you, right? Mm. That, that it's sort of, especially further out, um, catches uh, any any movements, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's where it supports each other. I would say the the more um, the more transient uh, online business you have as a hotel, the more that part, the bigger part of segmentation that is the more a system will help you to squeeze out uh, yeah. more revenue. So, but like Lars said, I think revenue management, if you look at reports and statistics you know, from, from airline, from hotels in general, what Cornell is showing and so on, revenue management has as a, as a theory, more or less a 15% impact on, on the revenues. Um, and I would say, like Lars said, between 60 to 80% of that comes from 
proper like let's say turning around the big stone strategies and so on and and the last 20 to 40 percent you optimize with a with a very good pricing system right right when you talk to your customers do you is it does it really matter what uh, solutions they have in place or do you have a preference towards any specific solutions or do you guys just say if you've got these bare minimums in place then we can work with that yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter or do you have a preference in terms of what you would like them to bring to the table yeah so yeah. bare minimum we have for sure and um, we have preferred systems um, but it's very important for us and has been from the beginning that we that we as a company keep a neutral standpoint yeah. we, we never take any commissions for implementing something um, and I would say we have very good contacts with all the main players that are worth having contact with yeah and then let's say now that they are five six good revenue management systems and I think our strength is that we can because non system no system is there's not one fit for all no um, and certain you know a 500 room plus uh, mice hotel with big conference space has another need um, from a system um, than a 50 room uh, in the middle of Berlin yeah so then we can we have the, the, the our preferred range let's say and then we cherry pick uh, depending on the client needs right, right. Uh, yeah. and your approach when you work with your clients is that um, you, you, you don't necessarily say to them you guys don't need a revenue manager or anyone to look after your revenue because we can do that for you or do you say uh, or is that what you say or do you say you guys have a revenue manager fantastic we can work together with them and build better programs or better put better uh, structures in place for you uh, what's that dynamic look like when you're working with with customers mm -hmm. so if they come to you and say yeah if we use your services do we need to hire revenue do we need to employ someone as well or what's how do you handle that or navigate mm -hmm. that uh yeah a good question ultimately they don't need to hire their own revenue manager then because that's we we are their revenue manager right. we do the daily revenue management for them um, we do the revenue management strategy, we do the forecasting, we do the pricing, we do the yielding, um, etc. So they don't need their own revenue manager on site. What we, uh, what we always have in, in, in the hotels is that we have one main contact person that, um, that is actually our, our sort of support on site. Mm -hmm. um, that can be a revenue coordinator, that can be a reservations manager, it can be front office manager. In some cases it's the GM if it's a smaller uh, property yeah um, and we do feel that it our our output varies depending on the quality of that person on property as well so if they're good and they're also good in convincing us other stakeholders on property if they're quick on, on putting some of the things in the system oh. there's some things that we like how far we go so to say and there's some things that we say hey you would you actually you might need to contact your market manager from an OTA to set up this and this um, which is then where, where we might not go to that, to that other external partner and then it's good to have someone on property that mm -hmm. understands why it's important and that, that can execute yeah. it quickly. But mm -hmm. for sure we don't need a revenue manager there. Right. That's sort of what, what, we would, what we do. Right, okay. Yeah. And in essence, I mean, outsourcing is one of the three uh, pillars we offer as a company and in the outsourcing it's clear we are the revenue manager, it's supposed to be a part of the team. It's, just like a chain hotel is sort of connecting themselves to a revenue center of Hilton. Mm -hmm. um, but in the consulting part uh, or the training part, then for sure there are elements of them having, uh, we did for example one for a chain of fortune hotels in Hungary and they have their own revenue center mm -hmm. and they took us in to sort of, hey guys look with a fresh view from outside, what can we improve in our processes, in our technology, in the way we work. So that's that's then a different story. It's more proper consulting, right? Um, but the outsourcing part is really a supplement to their own revenue, yeah. or not a supplement, but a um, yeah substitute substitute yeah. 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 to to a revenue manager yeah. for sure. Okay, and your your regional focus is Europe only, pure, purely Europe, or do you are you looking to branch out of Europe as well? We we sort of have that three hour time difference uh, rule um, to do for the outsourcing, so that we're not. Uh, They'd be on the other side of the world to be a bit difficult to, yeah, yeah. to react quickly um, to unless things. we have local offices in those places uh, right. which, maybe right. the future, yeah. which, which currently we don't but right. uh, yeah um, but so so currently it's uh, it's Europe yeah and the focus is, is Central Europe we, we do have a, uh, a larger client in Iceland so we 
uh, where she managed some hotels in, in Reykjavik, mm-hmm. um, which is sort of the furthest out northwest. And we have some, we have a client on the Mediterranean coast of Slovenia, mm-hmm. which is sort of the furthest south, but uh, the rest is sort of in between. Yeah. Okay. Leads to my next question in terms of their, the geographic or the locations of your clients. Yeah. Obviously, they're in different areas of the of the continent of, of let's say Europe. Yeah. Um, each of those areas themselves would have different um, peaks and, and low seasons when mm-hmm. it comes to uh, their their traffic. Yeah. How do you both keep yourselves informed so that you're you yourselves are very much aware of the market? Yeah. Um, what's going on in those markets so that you can yeah. actually uh, yeah. do what you guys do the best you can? Oh, it's a good question. I mean, because each market is different for sure. But when you have done a lot of different markets in, in different countries, you also see um, equals in how markets behave. If it's a very um, it's a business city or if it's also a business city and a popular uh, leisure destination and seasonalities and so on. But to answer it, because uh, it's also a question we get a lot from hoteliers that are mm-hmm. in markets where we are not operating at the moment. Right. Um, the answer is we as analyzers of data, we can learn the markets with data. So if there is proper market share and proper hotel data, we can go in and learn the market. And obviously with the local help and support of the hotel and team on, on, on site. Um, but in essence, um, you can throw us any data and we don't even need to know the name of the city. In, just focus on data. You can learn how things are ticking and from statistics and all of this. Yeah. So that is actually the reason why we can go into new markets and have plug it into our tools and analyze it in our ways and then get a very fast return investment and right. uh, get things going. Good. Okay. But for sure, a, a close collaboration with hotel teams on property and yeah. you know, uh, yeah. communication there, that's also a key. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What makes um, a good business intelligence tool today? What makes a good rate shopping tool? What makes a good revenue management tool? Are there any key elements in a modern hotel that stand out for those types of solutions that they should be looking for because there's a lot of choice out there there's there's a a, a varying range of options mm-hmm. um how does a hotel know which is the right one for them it's a good question i mean we have sort of two rate shoppers we we like to work with on, on the rate shopping level and i'm not going to say who now but like one one thing that combines both of them is they they're both both online cloud-based you they both have their Sort of regular shops they both you can see it graphically you can see it in different sort of sort of ways you can pull it as a as a table yeah um but you can also just pull live data so uh, not restricted to so and so many shops whatever but if you need the data you can you can access it you can put your different concepts and different uh, together and stuff so that they're flexible in that regards mm. um bi tools are find difficult because there is there's a couple of cool BI tools out there but then some of them are only connected to like Opera the main PMS out there and hardly any of our clients work with Opera mm-hmm. um, because it's more like the, the, the chain PMS so yeah that's actually a great tool we, we use for one of our clients because the others don't it, it doesn't work for the others right. um, and um, then there's tools that are really good for like just the very simple basics like pickup uh, pickup reports so you just graphically see okay what came in in which segment on what day etc but obviously if you want to drill down further then you also would like a, a tool that gives you information on on sources on on company on on, on accounts etc that you can really drill down and see okay when is my company or my tour operator actually booking me on which days so and that you can do good displacement analysis and mm-hmm. so on and so forth so I think like yeah, flexibility and really going into all the different areas of the PMS is mm. just really key. Yeah. Mm. For the RMS systems, I would say there are a lot of systems that call themselves a revenue management system, but maybe there's only a handful that actually works with proper algorithms and really AI and so on. And the rest are maybe more linear regression models, uh, rule-based decision making and right. so on. What factors should a, a system take into consideration when doing a pricing? And um, I know there are talks about you know snow depth for hotels in the Alps or weather on the on the Baltic coast, etc. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess it's 
in the end of the day, it, it, it boils down to what factors do they build in? Do they look at the internal uh, pickup paces or only external factors? Uh, but I can say one thing for sure, if you only have a system that only looks on your competitors at uh, public prices mm. and that's it, yeah. uh, you know, you can yeah. go very wrong. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So what, based on the experience that you've acquired now through being in, in the business with your company, what are some of the key mistakes that you see time and time again that, that hotels make when it comes to, to their revenue management? Have a good one there. You can start. <laughs> it might be the same. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. Selling their high demand days to groups to too low prices too early. Yeah. Like one thing that we often see when we take over hotels and fair destinations is that fares are sold out for the next two years. Right. And that's our biggest, or uh, well, that's one of the big optimization things that we have. Right. Is is these? That's when revenue management thrives when there's high demand mm. and during fair times you can make such a difference with good revenue management and often we see that they simply block it out to some um, yeah some some group agency that then resells it to the actual clients and and I always find that frustrating because you can't really win because you give them a price yeah. and they, they, they put on top what they can and they have a nice margin and the hotel is set with a but do you think the hotels are awesome. aware that that's happening to them? No, no that's they're not the right this thing is that the biggest mistakes they're doing is they sell the inventory on a first come first serve basis. Right. Yeah? They don't think and they don't choose their business. They don't filter their demand properly. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, like Lars said, groups for fairs or agency business or too much production from corporate volume contracts, etc. Mm -hmm. This is the real key or the real loss that the that, that hotels are doing. And I mean, in all fairness, hotels have all the right to speak about commission saving from OTAs. But if I come into a hotel and I see 10% of the business sit in transient and 90% of the business sit with ADRs 50, 60 euros lower mm -hmm. in corporate contracts and groups, um, you know, my 140 euro net bar ADR minus 15% commission is still a lot higher than a 70 euro net Siemens booking. Yeah. And 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 I can tell you, the real enemy of hotel year should rather be a certain travel agencies that I don't need to mention that have as a business to block up space for all fares for all hotels, mm. um, and just try to resell this. And they mm. they they do this to rates. They really screw hotels over in that sense. Yeah. And and um, so a, a, a big. Um, a big opportunity is always a, what we call a segmentation shift. To go in and, and analyze where is the business coming from, to what, what type of contracts, what segments, and then you start shifting that around, and then at the same time focus to on the, for the trends and online bookings to shift as much to yeah. direct as possible. Yeah. But the big money maker is in the segmentation shift. Right. Yeah. How do you feel that is the best way to help hotels understand that? So that they get ahead of that curve, if you like, that they're not falling into that trap. Um, obviously, it's an educational thing, it's an mm -hmm. awareness thing, but at what point do you get in front of the, the curve on that one for them? It's a tough one, right? Yeah. Because, you know, when you think, it, obviously, with hotel students coming through, you can teach students the next generation of hoteliers, how they should apply their revenue management skills. Yeah. But not all of those people are going to be running independent properties or smaller type properties. It's yeah. those people that, that f find themselves in these businesses without having that background. Yeah. What, what, what are ways that we can help those people better understand what they're actually getting themselves into? Yeah. I find uh, personally like to, to, to speak to have more honesty in uh, in the approach to share information on like industry events and affairs and in congresses to speak really openly about um, what's happening and what's not working what's working and also obviously information platforms that there are good platforms out there yeah. um, and spreading news and spreading messages like this um, that actually talk to the hotel years yeah. and um, now I guess nowadays it's podcasts and articles and yeah. you can stay fairly informed uh, if you're interested yeah. um, and I guess the, the internet itself is, is helping everything being a lot more available mm. uh, but you have to have a base interest as well to sometimes seek the information yeah. Yeah. and I mean it's like for, for groups especially groups of, of contracted business I mean it's a nice thought for many to have base business on the books and I mean 
depending on the hotel, we also think base business is very important. But um, so often we hear our fares are not my problem. I'm always you know full to, and I always go a little bit higher every year. Um, and obviously, if you don't work with any like group business for fares, it's it's a bit more risky. It's a bit more challenging. You need to actually put a lot of work into it and see okay how's the how's my business developing? What do I need to do with the rates? Uh, um, and so on and so forth. So you need to put more time into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, simply for these big fair groups, maybe just for the hoteliers to just ask some of the guests what are they actually, actually paying and, and see what they've actually sold it to to that agency and just see the difference and maybe yeah. just make a rough calculation. Okay, 100 rooms times five days times a difference of 100 euros. How much, how much money is, is this? How much opportunity is there actually in, in this fair? And if you have destinations like, I don't know, Frankfurt, Düsseldorf, Munich, Hannover, where there's a lot of high, high rated fair business, it easily adds up to, to a couple of hundred thousand a year. Yeah. I mean, depending on the size of the hotel, but yeah. just out of the fairs that you could, could optimize if you put a little bit more focus on them. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, we are coming towards the end, but I, just before we finish up, I'd like to just ask, in terms of Berner and Becker now, how many people do you have working in the company? What's your, your 13. Thirteen. Thirteen. And they're based in which areas? In Munich. Everyone All in is Munich. Based. Actually, okay. one, that's a lie, one person is uh, based in Berlin. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, we are, uh, we have made a decision to open up an office in Berlin. He's done okay. first there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did it as a try now for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, number 14th is hired. He starts in February, but here in Munich. and. Slowly, the, we're going to go the team in Munich and a bit in a bit in Berlin. Right. But I think our focus as a company is to sit together because that's our strength right. as, as a team to have knowledge sharing and uh, helping each other out and for our principle, etc. Yeah, yeah. So, is there a requirement for your team to travel often to hotels, or is it something that can be done remotely? Most of the work is done remotely, but there is also face-to-face visits to the hotel for yeah. sure at kickoff events, and also depending on which model you have with us, it's either one to four personal visits a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And what does the future look like for you guys in terms of, say, the next five years? How how do you see the company's growth and development? What's what are your goals? What are your objectives? Uh, Pontus is, uh, is, is better at that. <laughs> I don't know so. Uh, so basically we have a two-year plan, it ends at 2020, then the team uh, is going to be more or less 20 people strong and a lot mm-hmm. more clients, and mm-hmm. uh, we're looking at the five years coming after that, basically to to double the size as yeah. well, yeah. Um, as a vision. Um, and um, I would say, as the, as the idea is to keep as much together as possible, we will do that, but spread to other destinations in the future, uh, let's say as the need uh, evolves right, right. Um, but uh, and and the focus will in the in the foreseeable future stay on Europe as, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and you offer your your services not only to independents but also to groups and chains yeah. and, mm-hmm. and, and larger yeah. operations yeah. yeah so the target market is independent hoteliers also smaller chains but also franchise affiliated chain hotels because yeah. they are a little bit free in their choice whether they want to use the revenue center of the chain or come to us yeah um, so those are the but the, the bigger part of the spectrum I would say so Excellent. we have a lot to do yeah yeah, yeah. it sounds like yeah. it I think <laughs> I think when it comes to technology generally in our industry especially with the long tail I think we all have a lot to do I think that, I mean, we're making yeah. tremendous progress I think yeah. we, we need to see the good in what we're achieving but I yeah. still see that there's a long way to go especially with the long tail you know, the top end of the market, they get it. They understand technology. Yeah. They apply the resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They invest in it. Yeah. It's it's the the long tail. And I always say this: that's eighty percent of the entire market. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity, yeah. and they they really need uh, um, the assistance. But they also they also want to be open to it. They have to yeah. be willing to embrace it. And that's yeah. why I was kind of probing with those questions earlier because I'm curious to see how they react to certain you know. Yeah. things or decisions or proposals that you guys may yeah. make to them yeah, yeah yeah and i mean like you said the technology is, is ever evolving and it's going to happen it so is. much in the coming yeah. years and i yeah. think um i mean then there's always this question as well what happens to the revenue manager i think the time of having a full-time 40-hour revenue manager on one property that does everything very manual this is long gone yeah and then i think um, working in clustered solutions uh, when 
one revenue manager can handle three to four hotels today, but maybe ten hotels uh, simultaneously in the future when mm. the tech is caught up. Mm. But I think that there will always be um, uh, a place for a revenue manager, or like I mentioned before, let's rename it to a commercial director, yeah. because you you need to you know have someone that looks over the the, the vast commercial yeah, strategy in, in general yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, uh, so so we see a future together with tech and evolving into yeah. Uh, yeah. In, the, in the industry and uh, yeah, I think that's key. I think obviously it, it does need both. It is tech and it is the human. Yeah. You, know, you can't just think with the tech you can um, remove the human element, and without the the tech, you, 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 you the human is also limited. So yeah. I think you definitely need to get that balance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm sure that's what you guys help the hotels with. Oh yes. Yeah. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank really you. Appreciate you being here, Lars. Thank you. Great. Appreciate it. Great to, great to finally Cheers. get you on the show. I know we've been yeah. talking about it for some time. Yeah. I thought while well, we're here now, we will uh, we'll take the opportunity. Yeah. So thank you very okay. much. Very good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. My to pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for for tuning in again. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and as uh, Pontus said, Merry Christmas, and uh, we wish you all the best for for the festive season and and come safe into the new year. And we'll see you all again next year. Until then. It's bye for now. Thank you. Ciao. Bye bye.